In this video, I will show you how I make the armors appear dynamically on my characters. So first of all, in your drawing application, you need to have your body, head and armors on different layers so you can separate them and export them to sprite sheets separately. For example, here it's my idle animation. This is just the body. And then I have the head on another layer, which I can I can just display without the body. And I will export this as a sprite sheet. And I'll do the same for the armors. For example, this. And you do the same thing for every animation of your character. For example, the move animation, you have exactly the same amount of layers and you have to redraw the armors for every character, for every animation. And then you export them into sprite sheets. You can use Texture Packer, which is what I use. So now we are in Game Maker and all of our sprite sheets are imported. And they look like this for idle animation. This is an armor, another armor, and the body. And we have the same thing for the heads and weapons. So now what we have to do is to put them in a sort of little database to link them with a character ID and an armor ID so we know which one we should display when the player is in a certain state. So to do that, we're going to initialize some variables when we launch the game, which I do in an object that's called OGame. In the create event of this object, we're going to initialize two variables, one that contain the sprites of the character when he has no armor. So basically in this variable we want to have the ID of the character and a list of all the states that the character can be in, which means idle state or moving state or attacking state. And with that state we need all the corresponding sprites, which means the, the corresponding body and the corresponding head, etc. The armor sprites variables will contain the same thing but for the armors. So we will need to have the ID of the armor and for each of them we need a list of states and the corresponding sprites that needs to be displayed when the player is in that state. So first let's look at the init all character sprites function. So in that function we'll call another function for each character in the game which is called init character sprites which will initialize all of the sprites of a specific character. So for example, here we have a character called Gladiator. So we pass on the ID of the character and then we'll pass all of the states that the character can be in, which means idle, move, dashing, sliding. And next to that state, we'll pass in the head that needs to be displayed, the weapons, the body, etc. Here's what the function looks like. So in it character sprites, basically all it does is initialize another array, assign the character ID to that array and then we loop through all of the states and we assign all of the sprites that correspond to that state and then we put that array in our character sprites array and we do that for every character which means if we want to access the sprites that we need to display for when the character is in a certain state we just have to get this array and get the line with all the right states from it the init all armor sprites is basically the same thing, but for armors. So let's look at what's inside. So instead of doing this with every character, we're going to initialize the sprites for every armor. We have another function and we'll give it the ID of our armor and the list of all of the states with the corresponding sprites that should be displayed on the player when he is in that state. The function itself is very similar to the init character sprites function. We create another array, we get the ID of the armor and then we loop through all of the states and we assign it the corresponding sprite. And we, then we put that array in the armor sprites global variable, which means if the player is wearing a certain armor, we just have to get this variable and give it the armor ID and then we can know which sprite we need to display. So now that all of our sprites are organized in variables, we need to retrieve them in the player object in the draw event and display them in the right order. So to do that, I'm going to go in my player object 
which is called all playable. And in the create event, I retrieve the data that corresponds to the current character. And then in the draw event, we're going to override the default draw event of GameMaker with our own function, which is called draw player. And here's what's in that function. So what we want to do is retrieve all of the sprites that correspond to the current state. So the state variable is just uh, the current state of the player, which means idle, move, etc. And data sprite is the array that contains all of the sprites of our specific character. So we just need to retrieve all of the sprites and we'll draw them one after the other. But this will only display the, the default character sprites. But we also want to display the armor. So this is what this code is doing. We're basically checking if the player has an armor and if he's not dead. And if that's the case, we retrieve the current armor ID and we get the armor sprites from the variable we initialized earlier of that armor ID. And then all we have to do is replace the default armor of the character with the sprite we just retrieved. After that, all we have to do is to loop through the sprites we just set and draw them. And that's all you need.